This program is made possible by the friends and partners of Unspeakable Joy TV. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. the Lord. I want you to take your Bible and go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 this morning. I greet you in the name of Christ. I'm glad that you're here. This morning I want to thank the choir and the musicians for giving me just a little bit of time. I'm, I, I hate to do this to you, but we're going to have to deal with a heavy subject this morning. And it breaks my heart to look around my nation and see what I see. Beloved, listen. If I had to look at the nation, that'd be enough to make you cry. But when I look at the church of Jesus Christ, it's got as many issues as it seems the nation has. Somebody needs to talk about it. This morning, I want to look at with you in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, scandals in the house of God. In the 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 this morning, in verse number 1, we then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Here's the verse I want you to look at. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Beloved, when Paul writes 2 Corinthians, it is a follow-up to the book he wrote in the the, the, the first Corinthian letter. Now, I don't know any other way to put this, but I've said this before, honey. I mean, first Corinthians was an old-fashioned scald the hog letter. I mean, he absolutely cleaned house from everything from Dan to Beersheba. He told them to get it right, get it right now, or just to turn them over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. And Paul writes back in second Corinthians because they did get it right. They did turn everything back around and they did get it in the way that God wanted it to be. And so Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 through 4, verse chapter number 5, and he tells them, I want you to know that you've done the right thing. I want you to know that God is pleased and well pleased with what you've done. And now he gets into chapter number 6 and this is what he says. He says, I want you to make sure, make sure you understand that we are laborers together. He's What he's saying is to the, the one that sits here and the one that stands here and the one that sings here and the one that preaches here and the one that plays here and the one that serves here, we are all laborers together. That is a Greek word from which we get our word synergy. That, that word synergy, it has the idea of a bunch of different pieces 
all in different places, but all moving in the same direction, all going in the same motion. And something will get out of synergy when just one of those elements goes in a reverse direction. He says, look, when you as a a child of God and me as a preacher and then them as a deacon and this one as a servant over here, when one of you gets out of synergy, we are no longer laborers together and even the smallest little thing can throw the whole thing out of orbit and he said what will happen is when somebody who has received the grace of God and God has saved them and God has changed them whenever they go back and act like the way they were acting be before they got the grace of God and before they were born again. He says, it's as if you have received the grace of God in vain. Then he says in verse number three, do something for me. Make sure you do, do, do Brother Paul a favor if you don't mind. Give no offense in anything that the ministry be not Blamed. Let me define a few words right there, if you'll let me, in verse number three. That first word I want to look at is the word giving. That word giving, it means to furnish or to give over or to hand to somebody. You see, when somebody gets out of that synergy and we get out of that place, what we do is we hand ammunition to the devil. Brothers and sisters, listen. The devil's going to try to blow you apart with his own ammunition. The last thing you and I need to do is be handing him the bullets to put in the gun that he's going to use to shoot you with. Number two, look at the word offense. He says, don't hand the devil an offense. That word offense, it comes from a word which means a stone that is put in a path. And when you get to that stone, you look at it, you ponder it, and you try to walk over it, and yet you end up tripping on something else. How many of you have had kids and those little kids had those little, those little uh, landmines in your floor called Legos? <laughs> Boy, I'm going to tell you something. Nothing will turn you, uh, make you thankful for eternal security because I've said some things when I've stepped on them Legos. If you could lose your salvation, I'd already lost it, all right? So yeah, I, 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 I'd be looking at those Legos and I'd think, you know, don't step on that Lego. I know he left that Lego. I know that Lego hadn't been picked up and I'm paying attention to this. And what do I end up doing every time? Step on another one that I had no idea that it was there. That's what Paul said. When you, when you aren't in that thing of going in the way that God wants you to go, whenever you do that, you lay down these landmines and you furnish them for yourself, and people will trip over that offense. There's a third word there. It says the reason you don't want to do that is because we don't want the ministry. Watch what it says. Be not blamed. That phrase, be not blamed, it means to discredit something. It means to find fault with something, to be able to mock it. Beloved, here's what Paul is saying. Every time a child of God, a preacher of the gospel, a member of a church lives in a way that is contrary to the grace that Jesus Christ has given to them, they lay down these landmines and they lay down these pebbles and these stones that ultimately trip up unsaved people and they trip up people that are weak in the church and people end up mocking the church and they end up laughing at the church and they end up discrediting the whole thing because of one little pebble that got in the pathway. Now, y'all act like y'all don't live in North America. You act like you don't live in the United States of America. But some of you do remember the days of the PTL scandal. Some of you do remember the days of the Jimmy Swaggers. Some of you do remember the days when the news, to, the, the 10 o'clock news would bring up another pastor that had done something, another church that had stolen money, another thing that had come. And you know what happens? It happens just like to me as it does to you. It calls 
causes you to think, man, I don't understand. How could they do that? And ultimately, it causes you to question your faith. It causes you to question your walk. I can't tell you how many people I witness to. And they say, well, I'm not going down to that church. That church is where old so-and-so used to go. That church down there is where old so-and-so used to be. Here in this town, there are churches that litter the landscape. You can drive down almost any major road and find the shell of what used to be a church, what used to be a powerhouse for God, what used to be the unctionized holy place of the thrice holy God of heaven. But now it's that place when you drive by. Now you say, oh, that's where old so-and-so messed up. That's where old so... Now y'all can act like you're uncomfortable right now, but I promise you it'll get ugly before it gets pretty in this thing because somebody better start addressing the fox that's in the hen house before all the hens have been eat up and the eggs are gone. You know you'll lose an entire generation when you let mess go on in the house of God. You'll lose an entire generation when you let soot and filth take over the house of God. And Paul says you better make sure that the ministry is not discredited, that you don't put anything down that discredits the ministry. It's amazing to me in 2021 I feel like every single week there's another news story that pops on about a pastor that's done something else. Another news article that pops up that somebody that was at that church has done something else and it just grieves my soul. It absolutely wearies my heart and all I see on the national news where the church used to have credibility, where they used to put people like Billy Graham on the television to get an interview. Tell us what does the Bible say about that? What does the God of heaven say about that? That, now when they put preachers on, it's to catch them in a lie. It's to catch them in a trap. It's to catch them and get them all mixed up so that there can be another offense laid down. Ladies and gentlemen, you know who we have to blame for that? We have nobody to blame but ourselves. That's not Fox News' fault. That's not CNN's fault. That's not whatever NBC, MSNBC, ONN, PQQ, 333, whatever you want to say. It lies at the feet of the people of God. God that have let this mess go on too long in the name of whatever compromise we think. There's too many scandals that are going on in the house of God Almighty among the people of God. You've got loved ones. Some of you will not go to a church service, will not step foot into here a preacher. It doesn't matter how unctionized that preacher is. It doesn't matter how anointed that preacher is. All they can think about is a scandal that took place down there, an issue that took place down there. Somebody that that messed up down there. Beloved, you hear me and hear me well. We better get this thing back on track. We better start standing up and saying there is a right way and there is a wrong way. I've got teenagers in this building right now. I've got college kids in this building right now. And they've got moms and dads that won't go to church. They've got grandparents that won't listen to God. They won't hear anything about the Bible because of scandals in the house of God. What's the way that we're to respond to these scandals? Scandals when they pop up in the church of Jesus Christ. Three little things. Put them down right quickly. Number one, when a scandal pops up in the house of God, the very first thing we better do is weep. The very first thing we better do is weep. When a child of God messes up, you better weep. When somebody falls in the house of God, you better weep. I get real nervous when somebody falls and somebody messes up and somebody messes up on God and gets out of the will of God. And the very first thing you hear is some old, old loose lip, long tongue, forked saint that used to be a this or that, but they're mean as a junkyard dog. They say something like this. Well, I could have seen that coming. Well, honey, while you were watching that truck hit them, there was one getting mighty close to you. How many of you have a brother or a sister and that brother or sister's wronged you? Don't raise your hand, but listen. If they were killed today, would you rejoice or would you weep? You know why? Because no matter what wrong they had done, they're still your family. 
Brothers and sisters, don't be that hard-hearted, cold on the inside child of God that's so full of jealousy and envy that when a preacher falls or when a Christian falls or when one of your brothers or sister falls, you look at them and say, I could have seen that coming. I told you that was going to happen. I figured that was on the way. We better get on our face before a holy God and say, my God, we're sorry that the name of Christ has been shamed. We're sorry that the church of Jesus Christ Christ has been discredited. We're sorry that one of our brothers or sisters has fallen in that sin. Oh, God, give us tears to weep with those that weep. The second thing we had better do, number two, we had better watch. Can I give you a little verse? Nobody really wants to talk about this. It's in the book. It's in the New Testament. Here's what Paul said. Take heed when you think that you stand, lest... Ye fall. Take heed when you think you got it all together. You better take heed. You may be the next one on the next train ride down to Sorrowville. Beloved, you've got to understand, there's not one person in this room that is above falling. There's no preacher in the world that is above messing up. There's no preacher, no Christian, no singer, no musician, no children's church worker, no sound man, no video technician. There is not a security man, not an usher that is ever above falling. So when you see somebody else fall, you better look at God and say, God, search me and try me and see if there be any wicked way within me. You better watch. Number three, you keep on witnessing. When somebody else falls, you know the problem with that? That's one less voice to carry on the name and the cause of Christ. That's one less person that can tell somebody about Jesus Christ. That's one less person that's going to be in that path with you. When you fall, I've got a friend right now who lives in Fort Mill, South Carolina. He's pastored down there for over 25 years. I've preached for him. This is what he said. He said, Brother Tyler, he said when Jim Baker and PTL fell there in the late 80s, he said it did so much damage to the whole of the church in Fort Mill. Charlotte, North Carolina. He said you couldn't go out and knock on doors. He said you couldn't go out and tell them anything about Jesus or church because it had done so much damage. He said, but do you know what I found? He said, I found there was some hurt sheep. It was some hurt little lambs and they were looking for somewhere that they could go and have their wounds mended up. It was somewhere they wanted to have somebody that would tell them everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to work out. Our God's still in control. He said, man, God started blessing our church. God started building our church all because we didn't lay down, all because we didn't give up. Child of God, every single day, there's another scandal that pops up on the news. It was one that popped up this week. I don't rejoice in it. I don't get happy about it. I weep. I sorrow, but I cannot lay down. We cannot turn aside. We cannot say we're stopping. We've got to watch, make sure our families are good, make sure our marriages are good, make sure our homes are good, and let's get on the firing line and keep on serving and keep on preaching and keep on singing and keep on going. There's still people that need to be won. There's still souls that need to be reached. There's still gospel that's got to be preached. There's still hearts that got to be mended. We don't lay down, back up, turn aside. We keep on marching and keep on fighting because there's one less voice to carry it on. I want to ask you a question though. This is my message. Why in 2021... Because those of you that have gray hair, I got some, but I ain't got as much as some of you. Doesn't it feel like in the last 10 years, there's been an explosion of filth? Doesn't it feel like there's been an explosion in the church? Doesn't it feel like, you know, I can remember when I was first coming along, it would be people that were fighting. They would be fighting against the liberalism, fighting against the modernism. But now it feels like it's just a tsunami that's washed the entirety of the church away. I can remember a day, man, we'd have revivals at McLeansville. Lynn, you remember some of those days? And I mean, this preacher would come, that preacher would come, that preacher would come, that preacher would come. And man, they weren't but about 10 minutes away. Church there, church there, church there, church there, church there, pastor there, pastor there. They were everywhere you went. Now, it seems like you've got to drive miles. Some people in this room right now, you have driven almost an hour and a half to come to church because you can't find a church. You can't find anywhere that has not been 
stained. You can't find anywhere that hadn't been scarred. You can't find anywhere where God's at. You know why? There's been this explosion. Why? I'll give you four reasons why there's been so many scandals in the house of God. Number one, because of the inclusion of humans in the church. Beloved, we preach about Jesus. We talk about angels. We long for heaven. We talk about golden streets up in a city beyond. We think about a heaven that is beyond. But do you know who's doing that? It's a human that's doing that. You know who's singing songs about Beulah Land? It's a human that's singing songs about Beulah Land. You know the marriages that make up this church? I don't know if there's any aliens in here. Some of you have got me questioning things beyond. But anyways, you know, there are no extraterrestrials. There are no angels in this room. Only people that make up this place sing in that choir, play these music musical instruments preaching this pulpit are human beings and you know the problem when you have a church that's made up of humans every single person is subject to mess up preachers are subject to mess up deacons are subject to mess up teachers are subject to mess up marriages are subject to mess up husbands are subject to mess up single people are subject to mess up sound people are subject to mess up evangelists are subject to mess up every one of God's people we are subject to mess up do you know why because down beneath this suit is just an old armor of flesh of sinful sin cursed flesh I got a sin cursed mind I got a sin cursed heart I got sin cursed feet. I've got sin cursed hands. My tongue is a sin cursed tongue. And don't you look at me like you're a hypocrite. You got sin cursed head. You got sin cursed heart. You got sin cursed feet. You got sin cursed hands. That's why you think what you think. That's why you say what you say. That's why you go where you go. That's why you've got those inclinations like you've got because I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. Everybody that's ever been in a church is a sinner. But may I remind you I'm not the one that brings salvation. I'm not the one that that gives to you life. I'm not the one that you're singing about. And maybe somebody in this room, you've been caught up in one of those scandals where a preacher failed and a singer failed or a deacon messed up or a secretary stole money or somebody betrayed you and that hurt goes deep. That hurt goes down deep. I know it's there, but it's about time for you to dust your boots off and get back up because they're not the one that died for you. They're not the one that saved your soul. They're not the one we sing about. They're not the one we preach about. You say, preacher, can you mess up? You bet your bottom dollar I can mess up. But at the end of the day, Tyler Curtis is not who's getting you into heaven. You're not going to heaven by the way of my cross. You're going to heaven by the way of the only man that'll never let you down, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he will never fail you. That's why the church is not built upon man. That's the problem with the Catholic church. You know what it's built upon? A man. That's the problem with all religions. That's the problem with Islam. It's built upon a man. That's the problem with Buddhism. It's built upon a man. That's the problem with all religions. They're all built upon a man. You say, I don't like you. That's fine. I probably don't like you. <laughs> you say, you're, you're too loud. Well, I think your ears are too sensitive. <laughs> you say, you spit. You needed a bath. But at the end of the day, this church is not built upon me. This church is not built upon the deacons. This church is not built upon the people that built it. This church is built upon the only man that has never messed up, never will mess up, never could mess up, never thought about messing up, never shall mess up. It's built upon Jesus Christ. But as long as there are humans in the church, scandals can be present. And the moment you think you have found a church that is perfect, you better leave because you will mess it up. And a church in the world perfect. You know why? Because the people that operate it are imperfect people. Number two, this is one that I struggle with probably more than any of them. You know the second reason why there are so many scandals that have exploded? Number two, because we are at the intersection of prophecy. You are at the intersection of prophecy. Can I give you two verses 
and I'll preach on them right quickly. You say, what are you talking about? Are things going to get better? Not only are things not going to get better, they're not just going to go this way. Honey, they are headed to hell in a handbasket very quickly. How do I know? God told us. Can I give you a verse? Let me give you a verse in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 1. The Apostle Paul said this, This know also that in the last days... Perilous. I want you to circle that word perilous in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It's the Greek word from which we get demon. It's the Greek word from which we get demonic. It's the Greek word from which we render devil. Here's what Paul says. This know also that in the last days devil days shall arise. This know also that in the last days demon days shall arise. Honey, it's going to get so vile. It's going to get so abominable. It's going to get so so wicked. It's going to get so wretched. Every day we're going to wake up and there's going to be another news article and we're going to say how in the world did that happen? Can I tell you? The demons are running the show. The demons are running the government. The demons are running the news media. The demons are running social media. The demons are running so many places. The demons are in the church. The demons are running the, the, the city. The demons are running the county. You say is there any hope? Ain't never been no hope in demons. The only hope for a demon is when the Lord Jesus Christ walks into the room and says why don't you get on out of here. I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But as long as demons run the show there's not a lot of hope. You say is it going to get wicked in church? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to get so wicked in church it's going to make Sodom and Gomorrah look like a play school. It's going to get so... You say, I don't believe it. Go to California. Help yourself. You say, I don't believe it. Let's go to New York. You, you, I, I don't believe it. Go to church up north and see what it feels like. Any Yankees in the house that'll wave a hand of witness at me? Yeah, it's a wicked... Th- I know nobody wants to claim being a Yankee around here. I understand. <laughs> I wouldn't either. I'm going to tell you something. How did it go from... Because some of you remember what church was like when you were born. How did it go from this to this? Because God said in the last days, perilous demon days. Can I give you a second verse? It's in Luke chapter 18, verse number 8. Jesus made this statement. I think this is the right verse. I think it is. He says, in the last days, when the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith... In all the earth. Some of you drove a little bit of time to get to church because you can't even find a church. Imagine how bad it will be when the Son of Man has to question when He comes, is there anybody that even believes? Is there anybody that trusts? Is there anybody that's walking according to my word? Is there anybody that's doing things right? Jesus said, when I come... It's going to be that way. Well, let me just ask you a question. If the God that wrote this book over 2,000 years ago said that very thing right there, and you hold the Bible in this hand, and then you hold up the newspaper in the other hand, and you look in the phone book and you see the intersection of these two things, I wonder who it is then that wrote this book. The God that was able to see it 2,000 years ago. The God that was able to look at it 2,000 years ago and tell you what it would be like. But yet today, when the Spirit of God beckons your heart in this building to come to Jesus Christ. No, you keep pushing that away. I don't need to listen to that. He's not talking to me. He's talking to somebody else. He's not dealing with me. I just need to get past this. Can I tell you something? The Holy Ghost that read their mail back there is the same Holy Ghost that's reading your mail this morning and he's telling you the day is drawing nigh. His thing's about to close up. The Holy Ghost of God is putting the final seals on the end of this roll and it's time for you to get your heart right. Listen as the Lord Jesus Christ calls you into the ark of safety as the doors are closing, as the ark is coming to a rest. It's about time for you to get your heart right. You've played games long enough. You've messed around on God long enough. You've sinned your sin long enough. But the loving Lamb of God that could have thrown you in hell, He beckons to you and says, Come unto me, ye that are laboring and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I tell you this morning that there is a God that is calling you, but the days are drawing nigh. How do I know? Just look at the scandals. 
in the house of God. Jesus said it would be that way. Can I give you number three? Now, I can tell some of you are going to eat this point up. If you ate that last one up, you're really going to eat this one up. Can I tell you why there are so many scandals in the house of God? Number three, because of the invasion of goats. The invasion of goats into the house of God. Some of you ain't never been in church. You say, I don't see any goats around here. <laughs> Hold on. I'll show you a few. You see, when God called us to be saved, He likens the people of God to sheep. He likens the people of God to lambs. He says, as lambs only enjoy grass, so the people of God only enjoy the Word of God. He says, when the Son of Man comes, He'll sit down His throne and He'll say to the sheep, you go to that side, enter into the joy of the Lord, but on the other side... He said, I will take goats and I'll separate the goats from the sheep. Everywhere in the Bible when you read about a goat, it's not a good thing. You know, today, can I tell you what you'll find in a church of people that's run by somebody born again, that's inhabited by people that are born again? Can I tell you what you'll find with music and musicians that are born again? You'll find people, they don't care about the fluff. They don't care about all the trash in the world. They just simply want to come in and feast off the Word of God. They simply want to come in and hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. They simply want to come in and go to church and worship God, leave all the drama outside and just come in and enjoy. Jesus for a little bit. You know what you'll find about goats? You know, I had a goat. A friend of mine had a goat. I never had a goat. But I had a friend that had a goat one time, Cheryl. I actually watched my buddy feed that goat an empty tin can. And you know, that stupid goat went to town on that tin can until he realized there was nothing in it. And then you know what that dumb goat did? After that dumb goat got done tearing apart that tin can... He went straight, now his mouth is cut to pieces. He went straight over to a patch of poison ivy and sucked it up. And if some of you farmers, if you ever want a field cleared of bramble and thorns and thistles, don't buy a cow. You know what you buy? A goat. You know why? Because a goat will eat any old piece of trash. Can I tell you why the preachers in our day are preaching the trash that they're preaching? It's a simple solution. I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, but it's really simple. They are not born again. If you have a preacher that's preaching trash, I don't know what the Spirit of God does to him, but I can tell you what the Spirit of God does to me. If I don't obey the Lord Jesus Christ and I don't obey the Holy Ghost, I mean, I'd rather be buried under the jail than deal with the conviction that comes from not obeying the God of heaven and yet some of these old boys they stand up there and they're doing what they want to do saying what they want to say acting like they want to act acting like they've gone to a carnival acting like they've gone to some Dumbo show and Bozo's about to walk in the back door can I tell you why they're acting like Bozo looking like Bozo preaching like Bozo giving the people of God trash because they don't know any better they've never been born again my wife asks me all the time she says how come the Holy Spirit doesn't convict that situation. How come the Spirit of God doesn't convict that person? I used to try to explain it away, Cheryl. I used to try to explain. I don't know why. And you know what? I finally figured it out. And it's a pretty simple solution. The Holy Ghost will not convict somebody that does not have the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, according to Romans chapter number 8, you've never been born again. And you know why the church has got so many scandals? Can I tell you why the church looks like a circus, acts like a carnival, and is run like a carnival because it's led by a clown that's never been born again. But you get you an old-fashioned Bible. You get you an old-fashioned preacher with leather in his lungs, fire in his heart, Holy Ghost in his bosom, and he may not have a lot of sense, he may not have a lot of knowledge, but he's got something that old bozo doesn't have. You know what he's got? He's got a direct line to headquarters, and the good God of eternity will tell that man exactly what the 
the people of God need. Can I tell you why the church is the way it is? Because unsaved people sit in the pews. Unsaved people are on the deacon board. Unsaved people run the committees. Unsaved people play the instruments. Unsaved people are in the choir law. Unsaved people are in the pulpit. You, we don't need a revival today. We need an old-fashioned house cleaning where the God of, the, God of heaven and eternity opens up heaven, shows us our sin, and sends a wave of salvation into the house of God. There's nothing in this nation that could not be fixed by old time Holy Ghost salvation. You say, what's going to save the White House? Let the Holy Ghost save about 15 or 20 of them in there and you'll be amazed at what kind of revival will come. You say, what's wrong with the 100 senators that are sitting in Washington? Probably the fact about 99.9% of them have never been to Calvary and the only time they want to hear about Jesus in the Bible is come politically, a uh, politic in time when they need somebody to vote for them. I know this ain't comfortable, but I feel like preaching it this morning. It's about time at the church of Jesus Christ, be salt, be light, and stand up and say enough is enough. We the lambs of God want our shepherd to show up and show out and get rid of the goats. Mm. Mm. Does it not grieve any of the other people of God when you work yourself to the bone to get your unsafe family in church and the preacher get up there and act like an old goat. Says things. Doesn't have power on his heart. Doesn't have conviction in his soul. Does that not grieve anybody else, Bob? Can I tell you why there's so many scandals? Why there's so much trash? Because you got to keep trash where goats are. I'll give you this last one. And this last one's going to meet most of us about where we're at. The fourth reason that you're seeing so many scandals in the house of God is because of the insufficiency of our walk with God. You cannot live in Sodom and have the faith of Lot. You will not survive in Sodom acting like Lot. If you're going to make it in Sodom, you've got to have the faith of Abraham. The ten minutes a week that most preachers and Christians spend in their Bible, when the preacher opens it up and they say, I wonder what it says, and they start reading. The ten minutes a week that we give to God, no wonder most Christians aren't lasting in Sodom. Beloved, listen. The bigger you get with God the bigger the target is on your back. The more you do with God, you get a target that grows on your spirit. That's why some of you are dealing with discouragement you've never dreamed of. That's why some of you are dealing with depression like you've never thought about. That's why some of you feel like God's gone vacant. That's why you feel the doubt in your ear. That's why the devil's constantly whispering, you are this, you're not that, you're ending up here, you're not going there. That's why you're dealing with so much because you're trying to walk with God and you're trying to get deeper with God and you're trying to go further with God and you're trying to dig down deeper. And the more you do it, the bigger the target gets. Why? Well, here's why. Because God is starting to give credibility to this body of believers. This morning on the television, this church reached roughly about six and a half million people. And so the reason that the devil has taken the target and put it on your back is what would he do What kind of damage would it do, Bob, if a scandal hit this house? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see how God is trying to protect the flock? Can I tell you something? When you're watching TV and something tells you you need to be reading your Bible, I guarantee you that's not the devil. When you're riding down the road and you listen to music and something says you need to pray, I promise you that's not the devil. The devil does not tell you to do things that will help you grow. But when you are reading the Bible and something whispers in your ear and says, you don't understand that. You're not getting anything out of that. Or how about when you read your Bible, something says you need to be praying 
And when you start praying, something says you need to be reading your Bible. You see, the devil is trying to let that target stay as large as possible. You say, what's the only hope you have in this day? It's as you walk with God, you stand firm behind the shield of faith. You stand firm behind the shield of faith. Beloved, listen to me. Today, in this state, there are multiple churches that had a little deacon that had to stand up and say, I'm sorry, folks. Our pastor won't be here today. In fact, he's not our pastor anymore. And there'll be so many questions that ripple. People that won't go to church anywhere because of that one thing. There'll be a little preacher somewhere that has to stand up and say, Preach. People, we've got to have a little business meeting. One of our deacons, one of our staff members, one of our teachers, they messed up. And the ripple effect that will go through that church will last for generations to come. And maybe you're here today and you got hurt in a church scandal. And it's wounded you. It's caused you to stop praying. It's caused you to doubt. And somebody had invited you to church for the last two years. And you decided to come today. I wonder. I wonder how all that worked out. Could it be that the God of eternity has been wooing you? There are some goats in the house this morning. You say, how do you know there's goats? I've seen the trash you eat. I've seen the filth you partake in. Salvation is calling your name today. Beloved, this morning, I guess my greatest prayer is that God so convict our hearts that we would say, Lord, search me. Try me. And see if there be any wicked way within me. Thank you for watching this broadcast of Unspeakable Joy with Pastor Tyler Galden. Our prayer is that you have been challenged and changed by the power of God's Word. Unspeakable Joy is only able to broadcast on this station through the regular prayers and financial support of people just like you. We thank you for your faithful support. For more information, please visit tylergalden.com. To request the full sermon from this broadcast, call us at 833-FULL-JOY or write us at Unspeakable Joy, P.O. Box 4558, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27404. All of our sermons and other resources are available free of charge online at tylergalden.com. Be assured that God's Word has the answer for your every need, that you may rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory.